Hello, the internet. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me here at the end of the week for another episode of Enter the Popverse. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson, your video host and producer here in the Popverse, a virtual realm created by Read Pop. And this is our weekly pop culture chat show where we talk about everything going on in the world of pop culture. We answer your questions and we bring some amazing friends in to join us. Potverse, nailing it with our emoji game today. It is Shark Week here in the Potverse following the official Shark Week and we're having a super fun, happy time. In addition, you can find everything that we talk about today, all of the stuff that we're highlighting, and so much more if you go and visit thepopverse.com. And while you're over there to get the full and complete Popverse experience, why don't you go ahead and get yourself a Popverse membership that gives you all kinds of exclusive goodies, access content, and so much more, including some ties into some of our live events. And our next live event is, of course, New York Comic Con coming up in October. I'm going to be there live. All of Team Popverse is going to be there live in New York City from October 12th to 15th. Be sure, because it's a big event. Lots of people attend. Lots of super fun stuff is happening. Be sure that you get your tickets for that right now. Just get it sorted. Come join us live in New York. and. Just have the best time possible. New York Comic Con is my favorite convention of the year. So I really, really hope that I get to see you there. There's going to be a lot of fun. Enter the pop versus specific stuff happening in New York. And I hope that you will come and you will share it with us. All right, my friends, you saw our thumbnail. You know what is happening today. We have a packed, 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 packed show. So let's start off. Let's put our hands together in the traditional theater kid round of applause. And please join me in welcoming the author and creator of The Meg. Please join me in welcoming Steve Alton to the show. Hi, Steve. How are you doing today? I wish I had your energy, Ashley. Oh, I've had two cups of coffee. It goes a long way. <laughs> so I want to get right into it. Let's start. We, we talked really briefly before we started. Let's talk about The Meg Legacy. Tell me everything I need to know about it. Well, Meg Legacy is the first time we've ever taken the entire book series and made it into one collector's edition. So there's seven volumes in Meg Legacy, one novel for each uh, volume, but there's a whole lot of extra things in there, like my biography. There's seven mm -hmm. different biographical excerpts in there. There's uh, the graphic comics that make up the graphic novels in there, one for each volume. Uh, but also, I've written four different Angel of Death novellas which are mm -hmm. short stories about angel the angel of death which they call the uh megalodon in its uh live pen in uh california in mm -hmm. the series. so there's over, over 200 new pages added to the collection uh it's only you can only buy and these are nice faux leather uh bound in faux leather the gold tip pages the whole the whole nine works but you have you have to order it www.meglegacy.com because we're only selling 5,000 sets. That's all we're about to do. So the first 5,000 people get them, and we started today. Started we're today? Already, we're already through our first thousand. Oh, okay. Gosh, so she's about to become a collector's item any minute now. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I do guarantee that the book, the whole set will be there. You go. <laughs> really nice looking set, too. It is well, we're really only volume one right now, but you can pay for volumes one through seven if you want. But we're only selling volume pre selling volume one now. And if you get in a volume one, then you're guaranteed to get on the other seven, the six. Wow, and it looks it's huge. It looks like oh, it looks like you could absolutely defend yourself with that if <laughs> someone was trying to come at you and steal it from you. Like it looks like you could do some heavy damage with that whole set. <laughs> Yeah, they're really nice, and they're they're designed to last, you know, forever. Forever and ever, as long as the megalodon herself. As long as you don't throw out by accident. <laughs> no, you never would. You never would. I, mean, I would love to ask you because you said that you know there's the initial books you've written or your biography is going to be in it. What is your writing process like? Like, how do you sit down and tackle a story like? the Meg or a project like the Meg Legacy? 
Well, Meg Legacy is mostly already done, mm -hmm. but of course, a couple hundred pages of excerpts that are, are the new chapters we're putting in and things like that all have to be done. So yeah, it's, it is time consuming, but it's well worth it. <laughs> so when you started working on the Meg and you started doing, there's a ton of research in all of the books. Like I learned so much reading these books. Uh, does it make you nervous to go back into the ocean now? Does it change your approach to swimming at all? I have no plans to swim in the Mariana Trench, so I'm thinking. <laughs> You're not trying to go down to Challenger Deep and have a little explore around there? Yeah, maybe in my dreams. <laughs> I won't even go cage diving because uh, I've got Parkinson's for the last 17 years, and I'll trust myself, but I can just see the, the uh, newspaper headlines. Meg author dies in shark cage uh, incident and the, and the cage was still lashed to the side of the boat it would i mean it would be both appropriate and tragic in a lot of ways an appropriate and tragic death that's what i'm looking yeah. forward to yeah that's how you want to be we can put that in your eulogy it was an appropriate and tragic death for this author of so many incredible series each of which had so very many installments how do you come up with so many different stories in a similar storyline? Because the Meg has a ton of installments and then the Lock and the 2012 Doomsday series each have three books each. So how do you continue a story across multiple volumes like that? Well, the Meg series was written over 26 years. Mm -hmm. The first one was written back in 95, 96. And uh, the trench followed right after it because of a situation I had which is also detailed in the book where mm -hmm. we actually had a two book, $2.1 million deal with Bantam Doubleday, the company that published Jaws. Mm -hmm. And they broke the deal, even though the first book out was made that was a bestseller. And the second book was supposed to be Domain, the mind calendar story. But they were, they decided to cancel that deal uh, a week before I was supposed to get paid almost a million dollars for wacky reasons. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't want to diffuse from the uh, excerpt in the, in the bio in the story, but um, yeah. this is just one of the few things that have happened. It's that sort of my my career has been kind of a roller coaster ride, big ups and big downs. Mm -hmm. Do you do you tell the story about selling your car to hire an editor? Because I saw that on your website, and I thought that was fascinating. Yeah, I do. That's actually true. Um, I only I sent out sixty. Um, uh, info cards about my two page query letters about my story, my manuscript to about, um, like I said, about 60 people I heard back from about 20 of them all rejected. Only one person was interested in the whole bunch, Ken Atchity in Los Angeles, but he said the novel needed a ton of editing, almost a second a rewrite. And if I was willing to do that, he said any team would charge me $6,000. Mm -hmm. I didn't have six thousand dollars, but I did have my Chevy Malibu convertible that my dad bought me when I was seventeen. Fixed it up and sold it, and bartered a little bit of money here and there, and gave it a shot. And I think overall we can say it's definitely worth it. <laughs> pretty pretty good investment. Like Meg Legacy, it did go up. <laughs> ooh ooh, that's a good line. I love that. Um, I want to ask you, because I don't know if you've seen in the news, but there's been a lot of activity where orcas are pushing over um, oh, boats. Boat. <laughs> <laughs> so in a, in a fight, in an orca v megalodon fight, who are you betting on? Well, actually, I think it was, it was probably orca that chased, because they hunt in packs that chase megalodon into the deep. Mm -hmm. So if there's a pack of orca, then it's pretty even contest but if it's one-on-one -on -one, then the meg's got it Ooh, good answer good answer how many megalodon teeth do you personally own because jonas seems to own quite a collection particularly in the first volume of the meg we hear a lot about all the fossils and stuff that he owns so i was wondering are you a collector of megalodon memorabilia in the same way that jonas taylor is in the meg well jonas i think i'm not sure how many he owns but i know he's got one big long one like i have Mm -hmm. which is later on in the story. But uh, no, I, I keep some around to give away as gifts. Uh, I do have my big lower jaw megalodon tooth. It's really huge. Ooh, that's another one like this complete collection that you could use that to defend yourself. 
I, I don't know why I'm so interested in you beating somebody up with uh, Megalodon memorabilia, but apparently that's really struck my fancy today. <laughs> With the Meg legacy, why is now the perfect time for you to maybe making this collection and be putting out new stories? Why now? Why the Meg legacy now? Well, there's only a seventh book to write, Meg Purgatory. Mm -hmm. And then I'll start working on full time starting in October when I, once I finish lock three. Ooh. But, uh, you know, after that, that's it. You know, I've had seven is a good number to stop. And legacy gives me the opportunity to actually do a little bit of a rewrite. And because there were, in the first four novels, there was the, the stretch of time between novel one and novel two was four years. Mm -hmm. Between two and three was 18 years. Between Ooh. three and four was four years. So I can close those gaps up using the short stories and, and allow the, to create a super novel, I call it, where you go from volume one to volume seven, uh, 40 years worth of characters and uh, now you have something that I think would be a good blueprint for, uh, you know, a, an episodic TV series. Ooh, I think that's a great pitch. Which would, I have, a, which would have a much heavier tone, not heavier, but more serious tone than, you know, all the movie laughs and stuff. Okay, then, Steve, I'm going to ask, we're speaking into the universe, when this gets adapted and the and the TV show happens in the future and we're past all the strikes and everything, you'll come back and you'll talk to me about it and we'll talk about how you made it happen? God willing, if I'm still around, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you will be. I'm 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 we're manifesting, we're meditating, we we believe. I like that um in between each books also your gap has gotten faster. So you've just gotten more productive and more prolific as time has gone on. I'm not sure about that, but it sounds good. <laughs> what would be your best piece of advice to aspiring writers, to anybody watching this or who's watching it in future who wants to create something? I mean, you're a New York Times bestseller, you're living so many of our dreams. Well, if that's what your dream is, then go for it. But um, my advice would be to write about what, don't write about what you know, because that's what people try to do. Write mm -hmm. about what you like to read and then go do the research. Write about what you know is going to be very limited. But if you, you got to be able to do the research to find the story. And then lastly, because here in the Popverse, we celebrate the best in TV, movies, and comics. What are you geeking out about right now that you're not working on? So what are you enjoying right now? On TV or movies? Anything that you want to talk about. <laughs> oh, well, I'm enjoying writing Meg Legacy, of course. <laughs> books are available at MegLegacy.com. And 5,000 sets have just been reduced to all, uh, 1380. No, I'm sorry, 3380. We could scroll out. We could look at them. There you go. And they come in a variety of different colors. Wait, Steve, before I let you go completely, wh what's your favorite color that the sets are available in? Boy, that's a good question because I really love all three of them, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, I'll grab a set of all three. I've already put my reserves in so we don't run out. But um, I don't know. What do you like? I am a red girly, so I really, really like the red one. But I think your advice to simply get one of each is the way to do it. That's that's the universe calling. Steve, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here in the pot first today. We're so excited for Meg Legacy and for everything else that you're doing. We're going to have you back to talk about it when more happens. But thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ashley. Appreciate you. Bye. Ah, oh, my friends, how much fun was that? I have to tell you, we've been working to get Steve Alton to talk to us for a long time. This has been a long time in the making. And like I said, I read all of the Meg books this week and I loved them very much. They're actually in my recommendation this week on what we're enjoying. Um, that was a real treat for me and I can't wait to have him back when we can talk about more projects and more things. Ah, And you know, as always, it's not an episode of Enter the Pot first, if we're not bringing in our begrudging <laughs> and unofficial co-host. Do you like the way I throw you under the bus when I say it like that? Please put your hands back together in a traditional theater kid round of applause to welcome Graham McMillan to the show. Hi, begrudging. Graham. Begrudging. Begrudging. Yes. <laughs> and, oh, no, I'm not actually BB Shark. No. No, no, no. <laughs> So we had to retire the Scrollgram lower third 
everyone knows why. I cannot say why, but everybody knows why. Um, so I think we're going to play a game where you get a new lower third every episode. You chose Baby Shark. You chose, oh. You no. evoked Baby Shark. This is your fault. Okay, I evoked Baby Shark because the most terrifying shark of all on your shark themed episode is Baby Shark. Baby Shark is, is, a, is nightmare fuel. Baby Shark is terrifying to me. Wait, there are two things. Or in, why? Okay, so there's two things in my life that I find terrifying that are not actually terrifying. One uh -huh. is the movie E.T. That's No, was, that's legitimate. E.T. is horrifying. Well, I saw E.T. on a bootleg video when I was a kid. Oh, uh, struck ten. work, struck work, struck work. I'm sorry. Okay. Friends, I will tell the I'm story sorry. another time then. We support the writers and the actors. Strike. I'm stri I'm sorry. We can't. Well, that's, we'll I, that will, I will tell you that story another for time. For another then. time. Uh, baby Shark story then. I was okay. in Brazil for a Comic-Con in 2019. Uh-huh. And I had flown 19 hours to get there. And I was somewhat jet-lagged and crazy. I'd also had uh, water that may have given me food poisoning. Uh -huh. <laughs> at the same time. So I was not in my right mind. And I was at CCXP, which is an amazing comic convention. Mm -hmm. Just a, a genuinely amazing, overwhelming, wonderful comic convention. But one of the booths was playing Baby Shark on repeat for the entire weekend. And after a while, you start to just go crazy if you kind just like hear this? Baby Shark. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> oh, it's not working and I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, wait, really? <laughs> No, friends, Graham and I tested this bit before. I'm so glad you're not doing it, though, because Just people are honestly kidding. wrong. You can, so you can, wait. Are, are you really going to try and do it? Do-do, baby shark. Oh, no. do 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 baby shark. You can tell this yeah. is not pre-planned because you, normally I like to do uh, one of these and remove all the ads. No. But, but uh, I love very much that you're doing it, and I genuinely am having horrible flashbacks. Because so were... they, played it, they played it all four days of the show, just continually on a loop. And it was the loudest thing in the convention center. It's it's horrifying. Like, it gives me weird flashbacks of, like, I feel slightly sick. I'm kind of jet-lagged. I'm going kind of crazy. It's also not a long song. I think the whole video is maybe two minutes long, but then on top of it, it's just that one riff. Yeah, over over and, and over. over and over. What four days, were they four days. selling or presenting? They or... were doing some sort of video game based around Baby Shark. It was like a mobile game they were doing based around Baby Shark. And I will tell you, friends, I did extensive research to figure out if Baby Shark was truck work or not, and I don't think it is. <laughs> Hopefully it's not. Would you rather spend another four days listening to Baby Shark... The whole time, including while you're sleeping, like this is an OG season of <laughs> The Mole, which is reality, so it's not Shrek work. Um, or would you rather face down an actual shark, I think is the most important question. Oh, I'm a coward, so baby shark. <laughs> if, I, if I saw an actual shark, no, like I, I, I will go insane, but the idea of seeing an actual shark, no, no, thank you. I'm a very bad swimmer. I'm Are a you very, really? Oh, I'm a terrible swimmer. You're from an island! Sure, but like, <laughs> that means nothing. Uh, no, I, I, I'm, you know, if you, when you read all these like horror tales and they're like, you know, they were in the water for 17 hours and they just, they kept there and they just kicked the shark off. No, I would get tired really quickly and I would just like die. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen the videos where it's somebody diving and someone is filming them and then a shark comes up and they just like casually just push them out of the way and the shark just like carries on its yeah, very I, way? I wouldn't do that. I would just panic. I'm just be like, oh no, I can't kick it because if I kick it, it's actually just going to bite my leg off, and then I would die. Well, also, unlike Steve Alton, for you to die at the hands of a shark is neither funny nor ironic. I do love it's that you came just... up with the idea of the appropriate and tragic death, which I even noted down. Because <laughs> I have a question: What's your appropriate and tragic death? Um. Well, I will simply not be dying, so there is <laughs> there is no tragic end. Like I'm gonna go full sandman universe lore and like i will simply not be dying there are multiple comic stores here in portland that are for some reason in people's basements uh-huh uh and i'm convinced that my appropriate and tragic death is going to be that one of these days a door will close behind me and i'll be trapped in a basement comic store but like air will just run out and i'll suffocate surrounded by comics no i feel like my appropriate and tragic death would be like smothered by cats and even though i don't want to be 
um, buried. I do want to be turned into a, a plant, you know, where they just mix your ashes in with the soil or whatever. I would like to be a catnip plant. Um, oh, that, that would be, yeah. That's, that, that, that's an appropriate and non-tragic sweet afterlife. <laughs> I, I love that. I we're, we're like getting deep into like death talk in a way that I was not anticipating as we came talking, here. Come on, we're talking about sharks. Just also, I, I, I very, very, very much love that um, Ileana was probably thrilled that you did work on the orcas when you were talking to Steve Alton. That was an Ileana suggested question. We do do okay. little hive mind questions. Can we can we explain this to the viewers? Please, Ileana, uh, Ileana who, who's part of the Popper team, loves orcas in particular. When we talk about sharks, orcas always end up coming up. Them. I mean, yeah, because of course. If you never kayaked with orcas, like they're fine. They'll just leave you alone. They don't Again, care. Scottish. <laughs> like, when would I have kayaked with orcas? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think I get up to that I am doing such like adventurous <laughs> and active thing? Clearly, I think you get up to quite quite a lot. Um, yeah. Well, well, no, nothing like that, my friend. But uh, Graham recently wrote a feature for Popverse celebrating. We respect the strike. C celebrating? Sharks in mass media and in, in yes. everything that that may means. And uh, Ileana... I, I, can, I believe I can say it because I'm, I'm not... You can't. I'm not... It's a list of uh, shark movies, killer shark movies. And when we were discussing this, Ileana was like, are orcas going to be in there? And my first thought was like, no, they're not sharks. But there is an orca in there. Yes. And there is a... Orcas make appearances in movies, some of which are <laughs> as villains. I Orca bet moves not a union project, however. <laughs> but orcas, orcas in general are heroes because they are destroying rich people's yachts. No, they are like, they have lived long enough to see themselves become the, the villains or whatever. Um, <laughs> before I let you go, Pop versus Trolling is saying, would you read an article from Graham about kayaking with orcas? If so, give us a thumbs up here. Uh, I will tell you. <laughs> I love how you all think that kayaking is something I'm going to do. Did you not hear me say I'm a terrible swimmer? I'll get in the kayak. You, well, you've it'll, just it'll be the, like it'll, be a it'll be the posthumous article that will be published that will just end with. You're and inappropriate. This was the last thing. <laughs> It's great. Their eyes are like the size of soccer balls. They're huge. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would, my I death also with the pop first way. Petition to make it like what is your inappropriate death as a regular thing that you and I speak about <laughs> on every episode as ties into. There, there, there's a new death that we plan for each other. Yeah, I love this. Uh, Graham, is there anything else that we need to talk about or that I need to know before I release you back into the pot first and bring in our final guest for our final game today? Uh, no, because I'm really excited about the final game. I want to shut up and I want the final game to happen because I know what it is. Okay, Graham, thank you for joining us. I love you very much and I will see you <laughs> next week. Next week. <laughs> All right, friends, you know who this is. This is another fabulous shark infused friend. Please put your hands together in the traditional theater kid round of applause and join me in welcoming Stephen Ray Morris to the show. Hi, Stephen. I welcome our orca overlords. So Very... do I, girl. So do I. <laughs> Let's do it. I uh, can't do any worse than we've done right. so far. Uh, yes. Stephen, of course, you know as not only a writer, but a king of all podcasts, see Jurassic Right, the Percast, which I was on, my favorite yeah. murder, and is when we were thinking about shark theming this episode, I was like, if Stephen is available, I have to ask him to be on. Well, I was going to ask, Ashley, did you think about asking me because of the shark ladies on my desk when you went to go watch Penny Lane? I perhaps did. Can we highlight them? Can you tell us their origin story? Well, there was, I forget the name of the YouTuber, mm -hmm. but they were in Japan, you know, the like, whatever the, you know, machines to get the toys or whatever. And I saw shark ladies because I think, you know, post baby shark, we're living in a, a real shark reinvention time. I think <laughs> as orcas are now terrorizing humans and sharks are kind of just like the innocent puppies, you know, and I love this like sexy lady sharks. They're I do. Fun. Two. Uh, it came from the page of Steven, the legend. Indeed. Oh, it's Andrew. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> and also some love for the shark lady. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, Stephen, because you and I are friends and we can be silly together. I wrote a game based on the Sloppy Seconds podcast game, Slant My Name, based on the Tyra Banks interview with Beyonce called Beyonce Say My Name, Say My Name. So I have written 20 slant rhymes for your names. A slant oh rhyme God. is an imperfect rhyme. Um, and I want you to answer them as oh authentically God. and as quickly as possible. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> I'm terrified, but it's fine. Stephen Ray Finnis, what is your favorite type of shark? Ooh, well, I think I have to give it up to the whale shark because uh, I saw one in person for the first time at the Atlanta Aquarium and I cried because they're beautiful. So I also think they're adorable and I kind of high key want to swim in the mouth and out through the gills. I know that's not <laughs> a safe thing to do, but I, I, I do want to do it. You, you want to get out. I actually just want to stay in there where it's safe. Just like set up and <laughs> rent and bring penny away. Yeah, yeah yeah i live inside of a whale shark stephen gray chorus what's your favorite song about sharks oh i mean there's like not two, baby two shark <laughs> not baby shark uh i was that's our that's this generation's this this is the song that never ends you know uh what's a good song about i mean uh fins by jimmy buffett is probably a classic one that's a good one good that, Good one. I was like, all I could think of was a movie theme song, and I, I can't say that out loud. I mean, you do know, got fins to the left, fins to the right. It's it's classic. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Steven Spray Chloris. Chloris is the Greek nymph of plants. What's your favorite plant? Oh, uh, there's this tree in I want to say Namibia called the Wellwitzia tree. I the fact that I have this big pole is crazy but i was obsessed with this tree for a long time because most of the tree like lives underground and you just see these like really be it's almost like um i don't know it looks like an aloe vera plant but like even more like fucked up in a beautiful way excuse me um <laughs> yeah this is the internet we can say whatever we want yay <laughs> well with see a tree look it up i i spent like a long time learning about that tree and i've always been obsessed with it Steven Stray Torres. If astrological signs were sharks, which shark sign would you be? Ooh, well, like you, I'm an Aries. And mm -hmm. I feel like probably like a bull shark, you know, because we're kind of yes. goats, you know. So something like, you know, horns and, you know, ready to run full, you know, swim forward fast. But oh, well, and Mako sharks are the fastest sharks. So that could be us too. But. I also feel like there is a contention for hammerheads just for the horns <sighs> analysis, right? Yeah, I love them. And they're very beautiful. So I would like yeah. to think that we could slay with yeah, yeah. sharks. With with our eyes on the sides of our head. Don't, nobody photoshopped that. That's going to look <laughs> But also, the, like a blonde, it has to be blonde, right? Like full blonde head of hair. On yeah, yeah, top yeah. Of it. Oh my God. Stephen played Doris. Doris was the nymph of fishing grounds. Have you watched any Shark Week programming? If no, what do you love most about Shark Week as a concept? Well, I really love Shark Week, especially in the last few years, because there's a really great organization called um, MIS, Minorities in Shark Sciences. And they're a really awesome organization that basically just calls to attention, you know, how STEM has been unfairly, you know, white and male and... Uh, yeah, I've been a supporter of them for three years and I just like following them and learning shark facts from them and they do lots of internships and things like that. Um, yeah, it's very exciting since I found that whole team and have been following them ever since. This is how I know that you and I have been psychically bonded because my next question is, Stephen, Stephen Prey promise, I promise <laughs> to let you talk about minorities in shark science and why we should yeah. love them as much as you do. <laughs> yeah. They, they um, yeah, they're have a such great a great Patreon organization. As well. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. which I'm a follower of. But yeah, they just, it's really cool to see them, especially since they started three years ago, that they're already in, in programming um, and stuff like, you know, us talking heads and focus on their research. It's really quite an amazing uh, thing to see them uh, in all that stuff. Stephen Bray Callis, if you had a <laughs> battle cry before going into war, what would it be? No worries if not. <laughs> that, that was my first gut <laughs> instinct. So accurate though. <laughs> uh, no worries if not, it's fine. <laughs> and then you hack someone in half. I, yeah. I love that for you. Stephen Day Solace, what is your favorite act or form of self-care? Uh, 
watching ASMR videos, to be honest. Ooh, and That's like in bed them. with my phone, like up to here. And I'm just like, well, in those happy little trees, you know, like the <laughs> like just Bob Ross painting away. And that just kind of, it helps me chill out for sure. Steven Grin Lotus. Lotus plants are highly toxic to cats. How is Penny Lane doing? She is, if I don't disturb our stream, she is right there. <laughs> I'm waving to the cat who can't hear or see me and does not care. <laughs> she is, she's taken to sleeping above my head lately. And sometimes she'll step on my head when she's hungry. So, uh, but other than that, she's great. 16 Wait, and loving it. Does she step on your head intentionally? Yes. Oh, definitely. I mean, that does feel appropriate for a 16 year old human like, or uh, cat. Yeah. Just wake up. I'm hungry. <laughs> Penny getting shout outs in the chat. Hi, yeah. Penny. Hi, Penny. She doesn't care about us. If she was awake, she would be loud, though. She's the most talkative cat I've ever had the pleasure of spending time with. Yeah, she's so... Yeah, she's she's got a lot to say. Stephen Slay Forest. Kelp forests come from the oceans. How many aquariums have you visited this year? And tell me about them. Uh, I haven't visited... Uh, Wait, where was I? I was literally just somewhere and now I can't even remember. Uh, oh my God. Oh, I, well, I, I, I saw some penguins at the San Diego Zoo, but last year I achieved my dream of visiting the New Orleans Aquarium and then the Georgia Aquarium, which is the largest one in the world. Um, and honestly, I'm overdue for a Long Beach Aquarium trip because Ooh. I haven't been to that one in a while. And then I went, I went, I've been to the Monterey Bay Aquarium a few times, but I went back again in 2021. So I, you know, I just love, I like, there's something so soothing about being like that, that water light, that like blue, and you feel like you're in a 90s vaporwave, like CD-ROM game or something. <laughs> you're like, am I stuck inside of the mainframe or yes. is this good? <laughs> Steven, stay florist. When you stay home, what is your favorite shark themed entertainment? Ooh, well, I mean, you know, they might be struck work, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know. I was like, maybe, maybe some YouTubes, maybe some cuddling. <laughs> I mean, again, um, uh, Miss uh, Minorities and Shark Sciences, their Instagram and their Twitter are just really great follows. So I'm usually just browsing and regramming all their stuff. That's kind of my shark entertainment, as well as just hanging out with this guy and then all the shark ladies, all the shark so. ladies. I, I really hope somebody just cosplays as the shark ladies. I hope that's like a thing that catches on. Oh, that's such a great idea. Can I they, love that. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's a dueling Halloween costume we should do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the shark lady. I'll be I'll be the shark. I'll be like the shark uh like lower half and then Steven upper half, you know. We'll yes. <laughs> oh my god, that's so fun. What a fun uh mermaid idea. Yeah. Steven may harmless. Which type of shark would you feel most comfortable diving with? Ooh, uh, I mean, a whale shark for sure. I really do want to go, uh, I've, I've, especially lately, I've really wanted to go swimming with sharks. Um, are you I going like, in the cage or are you just going like for the free swim? Probably start with the cage and then, you know, <laughs> but yeah. it'd be, you know, I would love to find like, you know, ethical ways to go experience that, you know, because I just feel like, yeah, we're, I feel like, yeah, over the last so many years, it's like we've definitely come to appreciate sharks more and like realize like they're just little lovable. You just got to boot the snoot and then it's it's OK. I mean, That's I'm not going to say I wouldn't be terrified, but like at the same time, I, I want to appreciate speaking of like appropriate and tragic deaths. Like, <laughs> I, like I definitely want to like if I were to go, it would be admiring, you know, something in nature. I just feel like that's, you know. It's it's the Jurassic or you know it's that thing where it's just like yeah. oh the dinosaurs stepped on you because you were too busy appreciating it. <laughs> I feel like it's I'm going to the coral reef. Oh look, there's an adorable nurse shark who you can like fully pet. Like are just really dogs. Yeah. And then it, you're like oh there's a tiger shark. This was a good run. <laughs> yeah yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> like amazing, but mm, I'm having a horrible time. Steven Spray Chorus, tell us what podcast you're working on right now. Well, I'm always working on the Percast. We, you know, we're interviewing people about their cats uh, because, unlike Penny Lane, not all not all cats are as chatty as Penny Lane. But uh, I'm also in the middle of relaunching See Jurassic Right, which is my Jurassic and Dinosaur uh, podcast. Um, you know, it's kind of a mix of anything 
tangentially in that web, you know, whether it's like dinosaurs or natural history museums. Again, we've talked about sharks on the show before. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, those are, that that's like in the middle of relaunching right now. But, you know, if you follow me on everything, you'll find it. The Percast, if anybody needs a very calming, wholesome podcast to like have in the tub or to like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to try to nap, but I'm not going to like it's my favorite because it's just so calming and good. Everyone's adorable on it. Everyone's very attractive on it. It's a really great show. Just a, it's a safe space to talk about your pets because, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, we can talk about our cats for hours, our fellow orange kitties. But, yes. you know, it, I, I like to think that over the almost eight years that we've done the podcast that it's just like, hey, come talk about your cat for an hour two hours even or whatever and you know it's nice fun fact it's the only podcast interview i've ever done that my mother has listened to <laughs> whoa oh my she god like comics i don't care about that cats yes <laughs> oh i mean brego is so handsome i mean yes he's he's a beautiful boy stephen pay walrus what is your favorite sea creature that's not a shark Ooh, that is a good question i know you shouted out penguins earlier Penguins are pretty cool. Uh, wow, why am I? This is the one question I feel stumped on for some reason. Like, <laughs> what are sea animals? You're like, I don't want the sea sea cucumbers to be tweeting me, being like, yeah, how yeah. come you didn't say sea cucumber? Uh, no, uh, I mean, I love a squid. You know, I mm -hmm. love a, a I love a deep sea fangly fish. You Ooh, know, yes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, octopi or or octopuses. I don't, I don't know the. Pie, well, I bit, but we're going I mean, they're, they're always really fascinating to look at and stuff but um yeah i don't know squids are just so mysterious and weird and i think about sphere by michael crichton that book and, what a know. great book yeah it's my well don't tell jurassic park but it's my favorite michael crichton book <laughs> somebody somewhere their brain did just explode i'm not, I'm not gonna lie but speaking of stephen prey octopus ooh, what is your favorite seafood to eat Oh, uh, I love sushi. I, I'm like, I've become a real sushi head in the last, I guess. It's I don't Very LA. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I don't know. I used to, I like, I guess I'm not really much of like a cooked fish person. I really uh -huh. prefer, yeah, raw fish, I guess. I can, I can down a whole plate of whole food sushi. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of really good. Yeah. Stephen J. Lotus. J. Lotus is a popular art gallery. What is your favorite piece of shark-themed artwork? And if Ooh. you don't have an answer, that's fine. <laughs> I love that. Uh, oh, I wish I had something in front of me that I could. Call the shark it. ladies. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, you're right. This is 3D art. It's it is. Final it, figure. Absolutely. That is that is real art. Also, people in the comments being like, above Jurassic Park. I know, right? I like, see, you. look at the legs. Because they're like kind of pinup-y, you know, it kind of calls attention to the, you know, like the era when sharks were, you know, in the 70s and everything. So They're, they're delicate. I think also because they're so tiny. Like, they're just little babies. Yeah, these are really tiny. But I don't know if I would want a giant one. It might feel kind of weird having oh like, my god i want to like, like baby human legs no shark ladies to like flank your you know because obviously um you work in entertainment in la so you're rich to flank your giant mansion yes of <laughs> course yeah the entrance behold the shark ladies yeah we're like oh and they're like on the tmz tour and they're like and this is obviously stephen <laughs> wow. i mean <laughs> hey just live your truth i don't know <laughs> stephen clay fortress uh, Clay Fortress is featured heavily in Horizon Gate. What video games are you enjoying recently? Well, I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom, like everyone. But I'll use this again to call attention to something water-related. Uh, my favorite video game of all time is called Subnautica, which, yeah. you know, uh, I only played it a few years ago, but it truly is, like, it, it, it has weirdly, like, made me want to go in the water more. I know in this day and age we're like, you know, the ocean's trying to keep us out, but it's like, yeah, but that's why I like it. Like, I liked our Orca overlords. Like, <laughs> I, I, wel I welcome, you know, I'm ready to go back to the sea. And so, yeah, Subnautica is basically like an open world survival game where you uh, crash land on an ocean planet, basically, and you have to swim and build and all this kind of stuff and survive. And I don't know, it's just very, like, it's equally terrifying and soothing, which is why I love, you know, animals, sharks, dinosaurs, 
cats, there's like a little bit of awe and then also fear. So that, <laughs> that game kind of captures it. But yeah, it's it's an incredible game. I've spent so much time in that game that I feel like I lived there half the time or I did when I was playing it like a, a year or two ago. I, uh, I, I'm formally inviting you to come on our, uh, Graham and I's kayaking trip to see the orcas. <laughs> oh my God. I love kayaking. I go kayaking when I visit my mom in Oregon all the time. Like I would do it all the time if I wasn't in there's, I don't, have you seen a lake in LA? I don't. That, that little river that runs through the valley, that yeah. trickle. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll go I'm kayaking down there. Like a three person kayak. I don't think they make the bad. You and I have to flank it and Graham can be in the middle, just like writing up the story as we go along. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll protect it. We'll provide our own pod. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Uh, Stephen, hey, Eris. Eris or Ares is the name of several gods across the Greek pantheon. Who is your favorite god or goddess? Uh, the god of plenty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that was my first... That was my first instinct. That was a good one, though. I was like, there's a chance that uh, when I was writing, I was like, I was like, I got nothing for this one, but this sort of thing. Right? So we have two that. more. Stephen May Sporus. Which month is your birthday in, my fellow Aries? April. I'm, we're, yeah, I'm an April Aries, which means I'm a nightmare. But um... <laughs> <laughs> it means that you cross into Taurus tendencies. I'm a yes. March Aries, which means yes. I cross into Pisces tendencies, which means I'm a nightmare. <laughs> You know, we're both uh, beautifully lovely in our own way, you know, <laughs> in that regard. And lastly, but not leastly, Stephen Trey Orcus. I have no idea. I was out of rhymes by this point. What are you geeking out about that you're not working on? <laughs> Ooh, what am I geeking out about? I mean... And because uh, struck work, I don't know, probably like, what are you reading? <laughs> or what are you playing? I mean, I'm reading uh, a biography of Jody Sweeten right now from Full House. I'm reading nice. her uh, autobiography right now, and it's really good. And I think I'm going to try and get more into autobiographies, like uh, Selena, um, fellow Aries as well. Mm -hmm. I'm, I ordered that. So, yeah, autobiographies, I guess. Wait, what would your autobiography be called? <sighs> Appropriate and Tragic. The Stephen <laughs> <laughs> Mine would be called difficult and ill-tempered. <laughs> mm. I could see them flying off the shelves already. Uh, definitely. They'll be side by side. They'll come out like on the last day of March and the first day of April. Yes. And they're going to be, we will join Steve Alton as New York Times bestsellers. Steven, yes. before I let you go, and thank you for joining us and for joining me in this very, very silly game. Where can people find you, support you, and follow you into this new chapter in your career that you're in right now? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's quite a time right now. But uh, yeah, you can always just follow me at Stephen Ray Morris on Instagram and Twitter, at least for now, you know, whatever. <laughs> or sorry, X. Oh, my God. No, um, it's been Twitter and it will always be Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I'm on other things, but at Stephen Ray Morris on all the things to keep updated with. Uh, yes, yeah, stuff I'm working on. Stephen, thank you so much. I love you very much. I will release you back into the ether and please uh, give Penny a good pet for me. I will. I will give her a nice boop on the on the snoot. Uh, thank you, Ashley. This was so much fun. Bye. Bye. That was wild. 20 questions might have been too long, but more time with Steven is never the wrong thing. Oh, I really do love him very much. If you aren't following him on social, I'm just going to like out his business right now. He uh, might be having like a super fun adventure that you are going to definitely want to watch and live your best life vicariously through. My beautiful friends, thank you so much for joining us here in the pop verse today. As always, if you enjoyed this and you want more stories, more themes, or more content like this, you can find everything at thepopverse.com and complete links to everything that we talked about today down in the show notes of this video just as soon as I'm done talking to all of you live. And why not get yourself a full membership while you're over there so that you never miss anything in the full Popverse experience, including some super fun things that are coming up for New York Comic Con, which October 12th to 15th. Of course, you already knew that. You already have your tickets. You're organized. It's coming up in October. I am going to be there. Graham is going to be there. Everyone from Team Popverse is going to be there. Ileana is going to be there. We would love to meet you and hear if you watch our content, read our content, engage with it, and are enjoying it in any way, shape, or form. Graham says, more slant rhyme questions soon, please. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I think my wordsmithery 
really came into question <laughs> with some of those as we went along. What a dream. What a blast. I love you all very much. While you're here, why not do what that little banner below says? Like, subscribe, click the bell so that you never miss a single thing that we are getting up to here in the Potverse each and every single week. I will see you back here next Friday for another episode of Enter the Potverse. I have been Ashley Victoria Robinson, your video producer and host here in the Potverse. Thank you so much for joining us and I will see you next time. Uh.